how's your day been so far? It's been great. I've been having a great day. Um, I'm up at my uh, cabin oh. in the Lake Arrowhead area. Nice. I bet that's beautiful. Um, well, I'm just going to dive... California? California, um, Northern California a little bit. I have some family in L, um, in L.A. area. Oh, you do? Yeah, it's close to L.A. Oh, nice. That's awesome. And you're, you're from there, right? You're from the L.A. area originally. Right. Very cool. Um, so I know that you started acting in high school, and then you studied theater arts at UC Santa Cruz. So I'm curious, though, at what point did a passion spark in you for acting? Um, because I know initially from what I have read, it wasn't something that, you know, your whole childhood that you had wanted to do necessarily. No, not at all. In fact, I was really, had some opportunities when I was a kid, but I was resistant to it. I didn't, I wasn't interested. So at what point was that where you kind of felt like maybe this is what I want to do? Well, when I when I took um, uh, theater class in high school, is when I I mean it was kind of instantaneous. Nice. Did, were there any kind of actors that you looked up to when you were first starting out? Oh sure, you know there was uh, Harrison Ford and Mel Gibson and um, Sam Elliott, people like that. Right. Right. Well, I, um, I know that you have had some time in Utah before. We're based in Salt Lake, so I had to ask you about that. When you were on Granite Flats, you guys were based in yeah. Utah, right? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, I was, um, I was in Salt Lake. Oh, and, were you? Uh, we shot, yeah, we shot um, in a studio there. I mean, a soundstage there. Me. Okay. Uh, and also at Granite High School. Right. And um, and then there was a, a set in Orem. There was like a old hydroelectric power plant um, at the base of the canyon there in Orem. That's awesome. How did you how did you like Utah? Were you able to explore the mountains a little bit? Yeah, I loved it. I you know I I. Uh, got a, a pension for uh, fly fishing while okay. I was there. That's I awesome. started doing that um, and uh, really, really enjoy it and it's, it's, I stuck with it. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I'll jump into Hemlock Grove stuff. Um, I know that the third and final season's coming up. It premieres October 23rd. Can you tell us a little bit about the character you'll be playing? Well, I can't tell you much too much. About okay, right. Giving you a spoilers, but uh, the character's name is Ator Quantic. Okay. And uh, he's a stranger to Grant uh, to um, sorry to Hemlock Grove. He comes to Hemlock Grove, um, and uh, in kind of an odd way, he's a very unique individual. Okay. Uh, a leader that marches to the beat of his own drum. Uh, and uh, a very likable guy, I think. That's good to hear. Yeah, I've I've tried to find out as much as I could about him, but everyone's pretty tight-lipped. I understand why. Um, how did you prep for this role? Did you binge watch the other seasons? I mean, it's it's a pretty intense show. Well, uh, I um, I did see both seasons uh, prior to being offered this role right and um so I, don't, I was already a fan of the show and uh i could really I, I prepped based on the material i got uh in the the first the first episode that i got um uh, what was what was put forth in that mm -hmm. in the writing of the episode and also uh, based on conversations that I had with the uh, showrunner, uh, Chick Agley. Okay. Nice. Um, so for those who haven't seen it, you know, they might look at some of the previews and stuff and think, oh, vampires, werewolves, but it's nothing. That's not the focus. It's not like Twilight style. It's pretty complex. There's lots of um, family drama mixed in, I would say. 
That's correct, yeah. There's a lot of drama mixed in, uh, but the those elements are there. The, right, of the course. Vampire, vampire wolf elements, uh, and there are, you know, they are, it's not like they've been brushed aside. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, uh, I'd say, you know, Twilight does have some similarities to the show as a whole in the fact that um, they deal with the uh, vampire characters in Twilight as people, which, uh, and, and they have the, you know, yes, they have the supernatural abilities and, uh, and they are vampires, but they still have human drama. Yeah, that's a good point. I just, uh, I think it's worth noting too, like you just mentioned, it's just so much more complex than what people would assume as perhaps other vampire werewolf shows they may have seen before. That's what I wanted to get across. Um, oh, uh, yeah. Well, it, it is a unique uh, show. It, it, it's a unique take on it in that sense. For yeah. Sure. So speaking of that kind of complex element, the special effects are are really intense. Um, what What's that like? How did you get used to that? Well, it's kind of like I look at it like any other yeah. sort of job because the, the special effects and all of that are, are the reality of the people, of the characters in the world of the show. So it's kind of similar to, it really, it's, it's just, you know, suspending your disbelief and buying into the, the world of the show and um, kind of forgetting that those are special effects and that those are supernatural elements that have in, in terms of this world, that's just reality. Mm -hmm. Right. So I know it's a Netflix original series, which is really cool. They have awesome content. Um, and Netflix, obviously, is one of the best places to binge watch shows. Do you have any favorite shows you like to binge watch? Or I at sure least... I do. Okay. I like, uh, I like Hemlock... I'm, I'm, I like Hemlock Grove quite a bit. Right, but, right, uh, of course. I uh, also, I also really like Homeland. Okay. And, uh, I've been watch, binge watch that show, and also uh, Hannibal. Big fan of Hannibal. Nice. Um. So you have played a number of characters in in all kinds of shows, um, and move in films. Do you have a favorite character or characters that you've ever played, and why that person or people? Well, it's funny. That, yeah, I've, I've played all these characters, and and I still say that the favorite character that I've ever played was in a a play I did when I was at, at UC Santa Cruz called um, The Pitchfork Disney, a play by Philip Ridley, who's an English playwright. And... Uh, the role was a character named Presley Stray, which was a. It, it's still I'm still so fond of it. Maybe it's because it was one of the earlier uh, characters I played. Yeah. Uh, that I had such a good experience with, um, or maybe it was just that great. Nice. Yeah, that's great to hear. I'll have to check that out. Um, what do you enjoy most about acting in this, the horror, sci-fi, fantasy genres? Because you have quite a bit in that well I love I love uh, sci-fi fantasy genre um, I, I think it's so appealing because uh, there's so much um, creative license with the world of these shows and it, it science science and uh, the the you know unmapped, unexplored realms of science, uh, I think are fascinating. And so mixing that with creativity and, uh, and the imagination and thinking up of new worlds and new technology and even fantastical elements is, is intriguing to me. Um, and that's also the, the sort of, I also like to read a lot of that genre mm -hmm. of books. And um, one of my favorite series of books is the 
the Gunslinger, the Dark Tower series by Stephen yeah. King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that that mix is even even better. That mix is uh, sci-fi, fantasy, and westerns. Definitely. Um, so you, is there any genre that you haven't worked in that you might want to pursue? Or is this, you kind of have your, your niche and you stick with that, or? No, I'm totally open to doing anything except for sitcom. Sitcom is uh, something that is very foreign to me. I don't really get it, and I don't know if, it's just not in the cards. Right, right. Uh, but anything else, I'm uh, completely interested in and very open to it. Cool. And you've been in... Um quite a few projects over the years. I'm wondering who haven't you worked with that you would love to work with at some point? If you could kind of pick any people or person. Man, um, that could be a director or actors. I mean, however you perceive that question. Well, there's, there are, a, a large amount of, of directors that I um, that I haven't worked with uh, that I would like to work with, um, and in particular, I'd say I'd really like to work with um, Ridley Scott. He's a really uh, a talented director, and more recently, uh, Scott Cooper, okay. who uh, I believe directed Black Mass. I think he's he's uh, really shows a lot of promise. And uh, Ron Howard, and there's so many, yeah, yeah, so many directors out there. Uh, I know it's a tough question. Those are, no, those are great examples. So can you tell us about any projects coming up or in the works? I, I know I saw a few things there and I think I read that you just wrapped up a film that your wife directed. Yeah, yeah, I did. That's it's, awesome. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a great film. It's looking really good. It's, it's called Lower Bay. And the, the title may change though. So okay. It's still, it's still working title but um, we shot that actually in Toronto immediately after I shot Hemlock Grove yeah isn't Hemlock Grove isn't that shot in Toronto or yeah oh, okay yeah, it, was, it was shot we shot in the winter time uh, in early spring we we did Hemlock Grove and then and then immediately after shot uh, I shot a uh, lower bay with my wife and it was interesting the way that worked out because uh you know i was able to take her to toronto with me and she was in pre-production while i was uh shooting the tv show that's so cool yeah it's, it's very cool and uh, she's also the writer of the film and uh, the producer the, it was produced by also by my wife uh, jenna madison and the uh, um the producer of the ring movies Oh my gosh, yeah, real intense. Yeah. Are you able to describe at all what that film's about, or is it kind of under lock for right now? Uh, yeah, I'm able to say a, a couple things about it. It's, it's, uh, it takes place in, uh, in what is uh, rumored to be a haunted subway station. And the, um, the main character, played by Rose McGowan, she... Um, Kind of goes through a uh, a self discovery in this in this uh, environment of the haunted subway station and some things that she uh, from her past uh, come back to haunt her. That's intense. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. I can't wait. Is there a timeline at all for that or? Still. It, should be out, it should be out early, uh, probably early next year, I would imagine. Okay, next um, year. They're, they're in editing right now. Um, so 
know, sometime next year, I think. And it's pretty intense, man. It's a, I think, um, I think my wife did a really great job on it. And her, Jenna Madison is her name? Yeah, Jenna Madison. Perfect. Um, so for people who may be into the sci-fi fantasy genre and perhaps they haven't watched Hemlock Grove yet, perhaps they haven't caught it, what would you say, to kind of wrap up here, the biggest reason or one reason why you think it's, it's definitely worth checking out? Well, because this is the third and final season, the, um, the writers really, like, pulled out all the stops and uh it's going to be really intense and i think i think the audience is going to be pretty riveted by it um it's not something you're going to want to miss right they're so they're going all out at the end they totally are and the you know the 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 showrunner uh chick nigley is such a talented guy and really put together a fantastic writing team and and uh, from what I've heard, uh, uh, you know, regarding the final product, all the performances from the actors are really top-notch. So, uh, I mean, I think it's going to be quite a ride. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Richard. I know, again, you're, you're quite busy. We really appreciate your time. And uh, we're going to look forward to October 23rd. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for the, for the call.